welcome to this video. Today we're going to learn how to use the Google Data Migration Service from G Suite. Today we're going to be moving from one G Suite account into another G Suite account. We're just going to be moving all the email and I'm going to show you the steps and some of the tricks that you may not, not be familiar with uh, before we get this going. So the first thing you want to do and the first thing an administrator needs is the full email account that they're moving email from. So the source email account, and you can't have an alias, it needs to be the full account. So in our situation, that's gonna be lisa.green at observianlovesgsuite.com. You're also going to need the source password. And if you don't have those things, you won't be able to perform the migration. But there's a couple other things that we'll need to set up uh, before we migrate email as well. And this can be done by your users or it can be done by you. I'm just gonna do it here real quick just to show you the steps that need to be made. So I'm going to log into Lisa's account. This is a dummy account, account for me, so I already have the password. Okay, so here we are in Lisa's account. I'm going to come into settings at the top right, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose forwarding, pop slash IMAP. You can see that previously I came in and I set up a forwarding to Ryan at Observian Loves G Suite. That's my email address. Um, I haven't sent back the confirmation code. I should do that before we do the migration. It's going to act as a catch-all, but for the sake of the video, we're not going to go jump back in and send back the verification code. Um, generally speaking, though, you're going to want to send this forwarding to the next email address that we're transferring everything into. We will also need to enable IMAP. IMAP's how G Suite's going to be able to move all these emails for us. So that needs to be enabled. We're gonna hit save changes. And then I'm gonna log out of Lisa's account. That's all I need to do with it. Now I'm gonna sign into my account, which is the super administrator for this domain. And that's very important. Without super administrator credentials, you're not able to perform any data migrations in G Suite. And I'm gonna sign in really quick. Here we are, and I'm gonna to come to our top panel, search through my apps, and find the admin console. Okay, so here's the admin console as it's loading up, and before we can actually perform the data migration, there's just a few more steps to make sure that we authenticate without any issues. So let's do that now. First thing we wanna do is enforce less secure apps. So I'm just gonna to go to my top search bar and search for less secure apps. Look at that, super easy to find. Here we go, middle of my screen, less secure apps. Go to settings, and I'm actually, so it's disabled, that's the recommended setting. I'm only gonna enforce this temporarily, but this is gonna let us authenticate um, without any issues, and select save. So now I'm gonna select data migration. And this is what it looks like when you start a new migration. Notice that email, contacts, and calendars are three separate migrations. So you, if you're moving contacts and calendar information, it'll need to be done in three separate migrations. You can put them all into the same account, and it's, it's very simple, but it just it needs to be said that that's three separate migrations. So I'm just going to do email right now. I'm going to select continue. And then I'm gonna select my migration source. So today our migration source is G Suite. I am coming from a G Suite account and I'm putting it into a new G Suite account. But you have Gmail as an option, GoDaddy, all of your Exchange servers, uh, Office 365, and then in a catch-all for any other IMAP server as well. Let's select G Suite, auto-select, it's going to be either Exchange Web Services or IMAP. That's why we went and set up IMAP on the last account. But I'm just going to choose Auto Select and let it figure that out for me. And then my role account. The role account is the administrator with super admin privileges So for, the, for that domain. So without the super admin privileges, you won't even be able to get this far. Um, but this is where you authenticate again. So I'm going to put my credentials in really quick. Hit continue. All right, so we authenticated there. 
if you weren't able to get past that page, it may be because you have multi-factor authentication set up. I don't have it set up for this particular account because it's just a dummy account. Um, I would recommend that you do have multi-factor authentication set up, um, but sometimes it makes it hard to get past this initial setup. What you need to do is go into your account settings. So come to the top right here, select your Google account, and then create an app specific password for Gmail. And it's really easy. And then you'll use that password to authenticate in the last page instead of the credentials you normally use to sign in. So well, we get here, I'm gonna select the past six months, but notice you can come three months, year, past month, custom date. Custom date, you can go back as far as you need. And then I can select different migration op options as well. So choose migration options as you need, migration, deleted email, junk mail. I don't want any of that, but it's certainly an option for you. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select my users. So when you come to select users, it brings you to this page, and this is when you're actually running the migration. Let's look at our options. We can select a single user, or we can do multiple users. To do multiple users, you're gonna need the same information, but you're gonna put all that information into a CSV file, and then upload that file. So that file is going to contain the source account, the source account password, and the G Suite email that you want to send the source information to. And then all you have to do is upload it from there. I'm just going to do a single user, but notice it asks for the same information. So my source is Lisa Green or Lisa.green at Observian Loves G Suite. and then migrate to. So because you're the super administrator, you're not gonna need to know the password of whatever account you're migrating to because you've already authenticated as the super admin. I'm going to send it to my account just so that we can see it as it shows up. Notice I can select it right there. And all I have to do is hit start from this point. Now this is just telling us that it doesn't have auto refresh, so you're gonna to wanna to check and refresh um, on your own and that can be done at, here at the top right. Alright, so I've refreshed a couple times, this is probably 40 seconds later, and it's now estimating the mailbox size. Once you get to this part, I very rarely run into issues. It's authenticated and so now it just needs to start moving emails over. Uh, still estimating the mailbox size. So we're gonna let that run for a minute, but it's already moving emails for us. All right, so now it looks like the migration is 99% done. If we hover over this, 19 of 19 emails have been migrated. Uh, zero failed, so that's a good thing. Let's come in here, and let's just take a look. So I'm gonna search for Lisa. And let's just see. Look at that. So if you notice, this says it's to lisa.green, but over here, we're at Ryan at Observing Loves G Suite. So we've migrated those emails successfully without any issues. Uh, things to note during the migration is you can be in the source account or the new account that is having email sent to it during the migration and you're not gonna hurt anything. So if you have a user that needs to move to a new account but is currently working that day, let them work in their legacy account or in their new account, whichever you prefer, during the migration, you're still gonna be able to get everything over that you need. And that's, that's really all there is to using the migration service. Just make sure that you set up IMAP if you're leaving or if your source account is from G Suite and then enable less secure apps or enforce less secure apps and then go, go ahead and put that back to whatever setting you had it on before. That's not something you wanna just leave on all the time. So thanks for watching this video and I hope you learned something.